All right. Welcome back to Cool Times Podcast, where we talk all things cool about the cold storage construction industry. Today, we have a very special guest joining us. When this man isn't race cars or going super fast in his boat, he's building badass cold storage buildings. Yes, uh, he is. Good friend of ours, Mr. Sam Tippman. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Well, it's good to hang out with you guys. Yeah, it's good to hang out with you too. I was going to say... I was gonna say your company name, but you're a Titman man, so everyone knows everyone knows the Titmans. Most in this industry, I would agree with that. You know, I have to tell you a funny story. When we moved to Texas, we met a couple in our neighborhood that live in or that are from Indiana, and mm -hmm. somehow we started talking about our friends Sam and Misty Titman, mm -hmm. and she's like, "You mean like the Titman Titmans?" And I was like. I think so. So she ended up going to high school with one of your relatives. <laughs> wow. I, it's a small world. A small, small world it is. when you're tipping. Mm -hmm. It is. And I had a chance when I was uh, chairman of SEBA a couple of years ago, I had a chance to do a little five minute like roast session of everybody. And I included you on it because I asked the whole crowd, I, look to your left, look to your right. Chances are you're, you're sitting by a tipman. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was good. Yeah. So for uh, all our listeners out there, old and new, well, if you're a new listener, welcome to the Cool Times Podcast. We yes. appreciate you joining us. Yes. We're on year two now, season two, year two. Season two. We made some major upgrades to the podcast room. We were showing Sam, we were texting pictures of like our new little keyboard and- and Sound effects. Sound effects. I mean, we got my favorite. <laughs> party horn. Okay. And then Jenna's favorite- and that's for me just for you baby that's for me so sam you get to you're our first guest where we get to play with the cool new little keyboard and and um, it's the perfect guest. gadgets it's the perfect <laughs> the gadgets yeah you're a gadget guy you're a gadget guy. i love it you, you know it. it when i visited you out in florida you took me in your really really super fast car and it had a lot of gadgets i mean i felt like i was in like fast and the furious car you had like the like the air gauges on the sides and and your car mm -hmm. made a lot of like crazy noises when you shifted when my head wasn't in the back seat from going so fast. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways. Mm -hmm. They had a good time. I had a really good time. I was scared to death, but <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> well, Sam, That's this is not uncommon. This is about you, my friend. So uh we are going to get to know Sam Tippman today. We're gonna get to know about Tippman Innovation and your story, your growth. I mean, your your company is just on fire. We've had the privilege to work with you guys, uh, badass team, badass people. So, you know, we're here right now to talk about Sam Tittman. So tell us about yourself, how you got in the cold storage industry. Tell us your story. Sure. So my, my first job, I was about 15, 14 or 15, working on a project in Grand Rapids, Michigan, pushing a broom and in a cold storage and just it's it's in our blood you know this is what we do and our family's multi-generational you know the history behind it my great grandfather around the turn of the century owned a brewery imagine that <laughs> and part part of the process is they needed ice to create a quality brew yeah well they'd run out of ice the end of june or july and so they, he heard about some guys that were doing ammonia refrigeration in, in lieu of ice. So he went and checked out what they were doing. They showed him and he went and put it in his own brewery and it worked great. And he realized he was better at doing that than he was at brewing beer. So six months later, he, he sold the brewery. It was in uh, Yock, Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And he went around to all his buddies' breweries and started putting ammonia refrigeration in the breweries. And then my, my grandfather was in cold storage or ammonia refrigeration. Yeah. And then my father was, and it was a, a natural thing yeah. for me to get into it. Did you guys you have, into it. yeah, you was born into it. Did you guys have, did you actually have like a refrigeration company that was started like back, back? In the yes. Day? Was so I think it was around the 50 mid fifties. Sure. Or I could be a little off on that. My grandfather started Tippman Engineering. Okay. 
and they manufactured it was it was kind of cool they they actually were ahead of their time in that they uh they were building big skids refrigeration skids not unlike a lot of the the trend over the last five ten years in the industry but they were doing it back in the 60s and uh the it was they did really well with it sure. and so as my grandfather and a, a few of his boys, my father included, they did really well, and they were they were way ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Jenna when I first went out to Florida and visited you. We had, I remember, we had a dinner outside, as at like an outdoor picnic table, you and a lot of your team members. And Sam was telling me about all these stories about his, you know, his up up in like how he got in the industry and this ice story and the ammonia story, and and his whole family is like a family of inventors. Like they invented some crazy stuff. Did did you guys not invent other things too that were like was wild? Oh yeah. So part of Tipman Engineering, they they did a lot of stuff with the skate rinks. Uh huh. Well, because they need the ammonia refrigeration. So then they at some, at some point they owned they they bought a pool company. I think I don't know the whole story, but so they had a fiberglass plant. So they started making hockey dashers. That's right. You being a hockey guy. That's right. Yeah. 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 Right. Hockey dash. And they they needed they needed they needed something that was basically indestructible. Mm -hmm. And so they started making those. And I mean they shipped them all over the country. It was pretty cool. But you know, then there's the paintball guns and yeah, you know, paintball. yeah, paintball. From, I remember. Wow. That. Yeah. So the Tippins yeah. invented well, the paintball gun. No, no. So the story goes, they were using what we call paintball guns. They were using as uh, markers in the agricultural business. So the, the head rancher would come out and, hey, I want this, hit this cow with a orange paintball. I want yeah. them in this pen yeah. and the yellow go in this pen type scenario. And then people started playing with them as a sport and my uncle Denny was actually a self-taught gunsmith and he started building fully automatic miniature uh, machine guns wow. back in the early eighties. And then the, the federal government said no more machine guns. It's <laughs> yeah. ultra it's complicated. So he, you know, he, he started doing well and then they took it away. So are uh, you John Dutton? <laughs> are you the, are you Mr. Dutton from Yellowstone? Like, are you the Dutton family disguised as a Titman? <laughs> You never know. You're the Duttons of Indiana. <laughs> so you're the there you go. of Indiana. That's what you are, man. I love it. There you go. I love it. So then he he had this skill. He knew he understood how to make thing guns automatic. So he saw these paintball guns. He's like, I can make that fully automatic. And he did. And you know, when when we were kids, we'd play at one of the uncle's houses and they provide guns to us and we'd play with them until they break and then they'd know what the weak point was and it was a good time so we were kind of helped i guess a little bit with r&d that's amazing some way yeah awesome and then uh he he took over he had a huge market share in the paintball industry and did really really well for his family so how did you turn from sweeping floors to to tipman innovation i started welding when i was about 16 17 and my dad did ammonia refrigeration contractor. And so I was welding, welding pipe, refrigeration pipe. And then I decided to go up to Fort Wayne and go to work for Tipman Group. And that was around 2000, or 99. And had a great career with Tipman Group. It was a, they're great people, great family. I saw an opportunity in the industry that I just felt like it wasn't being serviced. And it was, it was the smaller jobs, you know, it was the 40, 50,000 square footers that all the big boys weren't interested in. And, you know, I, I certainly had the knowledge and the ability. So I chose to go out on my own and really focus on that, that part of the market. And, you know, when I left, it was, a uh, while well, it was slightly awkward, but I did so in a way that, you know, I didn't 
affect their customers. I didn't chase their customers. I, I was going for a different market. So it, it really didn't hurt them in any way. It's just grown healthy, healthfully over the years. We know the feeling. You, you guys, yeah, your, your growth rate was uh, a lot, a lot steeper than mine was, which is, is, is a, a blessing and a curse all the same. Yes, yes it is. You know, <laughs> it really is. It's, it's a, it's a good problem, but it's still a problem or a challenge. It's a good mm-hmm. challenge to have, but good challenge for sure. Well, mm-hmm. you know, we obviously have a family business. You clearly grew up in a family business. What has that, what has your experience been like maybe pros or cons or things like that? Cause I know some cons for us, like obviously we would love our family and everything like that, but we never stop talking about work. Never. Yeah. It follows us to family dinner. It follows us to, you know, nightcaps. Like we wake up Mm -hmm. in the morning we're like, Hey, did you do that? You know, thing that we needed done yesterday. So Mm -hmm. what's it been like for you growing up your entire life in the family business? It's complicated and it's awesome. There's so many great parts of it and, you know, you just can't rely on, generally speaking, you can't rely on somebody like you can with family. You you know, if your brother or father or son or daughter, whatever the scenario is, you know who you can count on. And that's a part of the benefits. You know, their level of dedication is awesome. The, the, there's, there's a lot of downsides, you know, there's a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, you know, being in a, big family. I'm one of 11 with eight older brothers. And, you know, there's a lot of competitive nature, which is, is healthy, but it's, it's, it adds complication to it. You know, there's, yeah. there's no doubt. Yeah. absolutely. And, you know, then there's the part of the complexity between your employees and your family member employees and making sure that you're doing things right. Not because they're a family member, but because their performance is great or, you know, it's, I pride myself that we're a performance-based company. You know, mm-hmm. it, sure. what time you show up to the office is irrelevant to me. You mm-hmm. know, it, I care about what you get done and what you get completed and the quality that you complete it. The results. Mm-hmm. Sure. The results. That's it. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, you know, especially you coming from a big family. I mean, I've heard stories that, you know, you guys help 50% of Indiana is a tip man. And, and, you know, I get that. And you have a lot of people in the industry that are, you know, you have different tip men, uh companies out there currently in, in the industry. And so you deal with the family aspect a, a lot like we do. I mean, we, you know, I have brothers, um, you know, one works for us in the field, one doesn't. He's a home builder back in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. You know, Jenna has a lot of relatives and family and and it's, you know, it's the cousins and uncles and, and people that hit you up and they're like, Hey, can I have a job? And they just, <laughs> they, they kind of assume like you have this glorious job for them at, with this high salary. And, and they just think, right. you know, it's like, dude, like it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, not if you want to have a festival business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And, yeah, and, and as the business owners, that's our responsibility. It is our responsibility to the business. It's tough because yeah. you got to tell you yeah, got to tell someone you love, like you know, hey, I love sure. you, but I I don't love you like I like that. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. I don't love you enough to allow you to keep doing this to my business. No, <laughs> no I, right, you're right though. I mean, it's it's brutal. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the hard things to navigate in family businesses is part of that emotion and part of managing maybe the expectations of family members as well. So it I think it's a lot like like hiring friends too. Like like we are a family business and most of our office employees are our good friends too. And mm-hmm. you know, I always hear people say, oh, don't hire your friends. It's it, you know, that's that's not good business. And mm-hmm. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe it's what you make of it and how you handle situations and how you able to Absolutely. Support things. And you know, so for us, like we're very, very good at being like, yeah, dude, we're, we're buddies, but like, you know, when 
you know, performance <laughs> result. Yeah, performance. Exactly. Exactly. You what's know, mean when the knuckles hit the road, or what's that? <laughs> oh, jeez. We're getting to it. <laughs> I love that button for you, Jenna. Yeah, it's yes. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, another another interesting family dynamic. You know, my brother Steve Tippman is the head of business development uh, or senior executive VP. It's he's high up at Tippman Group, and you know, customers ask us, you know, how how does Thanksgiving work? You know, <laughs> you guys are competitors, and you know, when when we're on the street, we're working, we're you know, we'll cut each other's throat. We go hard at it at family gatherings and even on a personal basis, Steve is one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. I love him to death. You know, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. Always enjoy spending time with him. And, you know, it, it's great. But when we put the work hat on, it's no holds barred. There's <laughs> <laughs> no favoritism at all yeah. or no pulling punches at all, but he's actually getting ready. To I think he's retiring in a couple of days. He had a really great career with Tipman Group. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. It is about kind of changing those hats, like your family mm -hmm. hat, your business hat, and making sure that you do it. Because <laughs> sometimes it gets, yeah, it gets a gray area. I, yeah. I think Steve and I could almost patent our process. You know, it's, we do, I can't, I can't think of anybody that does a better job at, separating that legitimately you know it's it's uh very clean awesome absolutely mm -hmm. so you you started titman what year 2005 2005 that's right yeah that's that's when i was getting out of college oh. <laughs> long time ago so 2005 and you was it started in indiana and you moved to florida or yeah, so I started in Indiana and you know, we still have an Indiana office. You know, it was we it was kind of an interesting story. You know, we had a house down here in Florida partially, so I didn't have to stay at my in-laws when we come down on vacation. I love my in-laws, they're great. I just I don't like staying with them. So like your own uh, state. Sam, don't worry, they're yeah, probably yeah. listening to this podcast. They're good. I'm okay with that. I, I've said it in front of them. It's okay to have a healthy. So, yeah, we have a healthy relationship. They're awesome. We were in Indiana, so this is 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, and we left for spring. We had a horrible winter. We had like 90 inches of snow in the field behind our house, and we come down for spring break. And it was awesome, 80 degrees and sunny. We had a great time. We were tubing and fishing, and just it was awesome until it was time to leave. And every time we left, my wife would bawl. I mean, she'd just cry her eyes out for a few days. It was bad. Yes. So, Aww. you know, she, well, she's a Florida girl. Yeah, you know, she grew up is. around the water and fishing and boating and all that stuff. That's, you know, and I take her to the middle of Indiana uh, in the cold. And uh, but she's a trooper. But this time she said, I said, you know what? I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Staying. So I actually, you know, I, I have partners to answer to. And I'm like, Hey guys, let's give it a shot and see how it works. Yeah. You know, let's give it three months or six months. And you know, my wife homeschooled the kids and I worked remote and it, it actually turned out because I'm about an hour from Orlando airport. I became way more efficient. I almost picked up a day because I was traveling five four and five days a week, I almost picked up a day a week because I didn't have any layover. Wow. You know, Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne sucks for travelers. Oh, it, yeah, you can't get there. Does. Yeah. It's a great town, but it's cold. It doesn't have water and it doesn't have an airport. I mean, it has an airport, but it's worthless. Virtually worthless. I'm flying in there this summer. I'm playing a hockey tournament there. Can't wait. Are you? Yeah. 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 And cool. July, I'll be. Yes, yeah. we won't be going when there's the possibility of 90 inches of snow, though. So who? What? What's no. off topic here? Fort Fort Wayne, Indiana. What, what? What do you do out there? Like, what's cool to do out there? Great restaurants, and I, I'm happy to give you some suggestions. We'll, uh, we'll want some of those in the future. Yeah, yeah. You know, Fort Wayne's a great 
town to raise a family. You know, yeah. it's very conservative, great school system. Yep. You know, it's a very safe area. And it, it obviously has a, a lot of family there. The downtown school fun. has a huge baseball, like baseball stadium. That's Yeah, right, right. Like right in the middle. Yeah, right really? in the middle. That's I cool. Like a Hilton or Marriott right down there, right in the corner. Yeah, there's both actually. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And and mm-hmm. you go down the block a couple of streets and there's an awesome coffee shop. Oh yeah, you told me about the coffee. I'm a sucker. Oh, yeah. for, like, I'm a sucker. For <laughs> like, give me a good, mm-hmm. like, you know <laughs> you what I mean? Like, the, you are. Yeah, but it's a cool, it's a cool downtown. For sure. Yeah, it, it. They revitalized it. I'd say 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and they did a really nice job. Really nice job. Awesome. Yeah, anyway. but outside of that, it's not a great town to travel from for work. Right. And like I said, it turned out. It, it worked out fantastic. You know, Orlando is, you can fly everywhere direct. You know, it's a vacation area. So all these airlines, the flights are cheap and they go direct everywhere. I mean, there were times Rob Adams was working out of the Fort Wayne office. He would leave his home. We were going to a meeting in Chicago. I would leave my home at the same time and I would beat him to the meeting or I'd beat him to Chicago. (laughs) Leaving my house, go to the airport, get on a plane and fly to Chicago, and I'd be there quicker. I think that's one of the benefits of us relocating to Texas was Dal- Dallas is great. Any exactly. connections anymore. I'm like, how do you- mm-hmm. I don't think I could ever go back. Like I, I know. I agree. I love it. No layover. I mean, I I can fly yeah. pretty much almost anywhere. Yes. Without a layover. Yeah. And layover is killing two hours a day. They do. They take so much of your time. So, and when you're more Pittman, time is money, man. <laughs> That's right, buddy. Every day I'm hustling. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it. So you're working remote in Florida, um, and then you you have to start convincing your partners to start moving down to Florida. Yeah, yeah. So they we we got an office down here. It was a it was a small office, and you know it was funny. They they just started migrating down. You know they they saw the lifestyle and the quality of life here and they they were hooked. Yeah. You know, it's uh it wasn't long, you know, and then there's uh the the no state income tax is another benefit. It helps a lot. Yeah. That's why you know, it's Texas yeah. like that about mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, Fort Wayne got a bunch of snow like seven to ten inches of snow last night. It's eighty degrees here. Absolutely. So it's like yeah, I made you uh before we recorded this, we made Sam close his shades in the back, not only for lighting, but, but I also didn't want to see how beautiful it was. Yes. Like, right. I mean, Texas is beautiful. We love it out here, but it's yeah. Like, yeah. We don't it's, have palm trees in yeah. Dallas, like yeah. like Florida. And, and sure. there's something about flying into Florida and seeing the sun and the palm trees and the weather is awesome. It just changes your mood instantly. I could do it that the I agree. I could do it that the you know, <laughs> As long as you stay near the coast, the humidity is not, it's, it doesn't bother you as much in the summer. You know, the, we always have a sea breeze. So all summer long. So as long as you stay within a mile of the coast, which I typically do, it's fine. Yeah. Or even a couple miles. Makes sense. Awesome. Well, growth is, growth is challenging in a business and you guys grew pretty darn quick. In my opinion, you guys even went through rebranding. I think you guys even change your logo, change your name a little bit too, right? Yeah, more of a like a DBA, you know, it's because we we try and capture who we are. You know, it's, we, our name is Tipman Innovation and we're always striving to innovate. Let's find the next best way to do something. You know, there's, we spend a lot of energy focusing on innovation. So that's really who we are. You know, it's, and we do it in every facet of what we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, sets you apart for sure. I agree with that. Yeah. Their buildings are cool too, because they, they're they unique in a way where they put a stamp on all their buildings. And their stamp is, if you look at their buildings, they kind of have the same cool, badass, like front entry of the office with the same awning, canopy type overhang. It's blue. It's a Titman blue. Yeah, I know. It's cool. <laughs> it well, looks the really other cool. don't know that. I mean, That's true. if you ever but, have a chance to look at their buildings, I suggest going on their website and look well, at their buildings. Well, yeah. They're very unique in, in regards to that, that fine touch. Like, hey, 
you know what you know who built this you know what i mean mm -hmm. who, well, came you know what? We, that, we actually, who came up with that uh the concept or the look both okay the look came from a really good architect okay. the concept of doing coming up with a really great design and keeping it consistent would be me <laughs> Hang on. Yep. Well, you know what? <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know what? We spent a lot of energy and money, quite honestly, to come up with just a, a great, modern, long lasting look. You know, it, it's, and then why change it? You know, it's, we can change the color. That's easy. In other words, we, we save a lot of money in design and engineering because it's, that's the facade. That's the look. look that's your look. And, you know, well, and it, you can, yeah. Stands out. And I like that people can tell that it's our building. Yeah. And, you know, I, I tell customers all the time, you may buy and sell or you may sell this building in 10 years, but it'll always be our building. You know, it's that's and that's how we treat our the buildings we build. I like it. I like it, too. Being in the industry your entire life, your family is in the industry your entire life. What do you love most? about this industry great question uh the people honestly the people and the relationships i mean there are so many you guys know there are just so many long-term relationships and you know quite honestly some of them are our competitors mm -hmm. but we're we're still we're still friends you know and they're just they're good people a lot of our competitors are good some not so much but the majority i'll say are just they're good people. Yeah. And they like to have fun. It's got to be the people. It is. Most I think of the people respond like that. Most of the people. Yeah. yeah. And I think we've formed some of probably our closest relationships in this industry. Mm -hmm. Like we have some of yeah. our best memories with, you know, visiting you and Missy and, yeah. you know, some yeah. of our friends in the industry. Like we going on the boat, yes. going on the airboat. My goodness. That airboat was insane. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and you don't even time. want to talk about the airboat. Why don't you? Why don't you want to talk about it? It's good. What do you mean? <laughs> so I went to I went to Florida a while back, and I visited Sam, and he's like, "Hey, uh, you want to go on an airboat?" And I'm gonna level with you, Sam. I didn't even know what an airboat was. No idea. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin. I mean, you know, we don't have airboats. Right. Wisconsin, we have right? boats. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have dinghies. <laughs> right no it's it, it's uh it was cool and i'm like sure and and you know it has this huge fan on the back and it's got a very flat bottom because the big fan on the back propels this boat land or a uh, water or land right oh yeah and you drive it through the little channels or canals through the everglades and and we were doing that and you got to wear headphones right because the the motor's right behind you. It's so loud. So we got like headphones on, yep. like the little mic, like we're pilots. Oh my gosh. And we're going <laughs> around and, and I'm, you're driving, of course. So I'm, I was scared to death to even like attempt to drive it. And there's alligators. Like as you're going through, you just see the alligators just kind of freaking out. Right. And I go, that's super scary. Like, you know, he's like, ah, don't worry. I got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you need one. I mean, it'll be fine. You need one because you right. know what you know you get stuck whatever like you know yeah no one wants to get eaten by a 20 foot alligator it's not on my to-do list but and you let me drive no. it i got to drive the airboat mm -hmm. it was so not fun. many people have yeah. i have videos of that you talk about that trip a lot yeah. you had a great time it was cool and do you still have that boat you don't have it anymore, right you got rid of it no i sold it i sold it about a year ago you didn't get out of much did you you know what we we moved so it was a 45 minute drive to get to the marsh and where I, I kept it at a friend's house that lives on the marsh and it was just too far. We just didn't go enough. And I hated to see it sit too much. No, that's fair. It was, it was fun. Trying to use your toys, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and work hard, play hard. You know, the rule. Oh yeah. Speaking of working hard and playing hard, you guys had a lot to celebrate uh, and, and, over the years and recently, well, not, it's been a year or two ago. You guys won the SEBA Built by the Best Award. Yep. Yep. 
That's awesome. So, so for the listener, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was 180,000 square foot freezer and processing for Wolverine meats in Detroit. It was a cool project. You know, it started out, it was in a really rough, uh, really rundown area. And, you know, it was basically an old neighborhood that they just knocked the houses down and just put dirt over it. So we had to, you know, it's considered a brownfield site. So we had to, the government helps the our customer with that financially. So we had to clean all that up, get all, everything fresh and clean, you know, fresh, uh, good construction fill in it. Mm-hmm. And then, then we start the construction process and, you know, the, the customer Wolverine packing, they are wonderful people, their family, their family owned business and their, their family are just first class, great, great customer. And it, it was a really great project. It turned out really, really nice. So we were real happy with it. Yeah. It was an awesome uh, achievement. And, and I actually got to tour that building, you know, we got to do a, a couple jobs with you guys. And and I remember Josh Custer's like, all right, man, Josh Custer is your, he's the head of construction, head of construction. I didn't want to like mess yeah. up his title. Sorry, Josh, you're the man. <laughs> Josh calls me like right. his, his title's VP of construction, but VP of construction. Josh yeah. yeah. And he calls me and he's like, you know, Hey, before you get started and you build this thing, you know, you need to, you need to come out and see how we do this, like how we build it our way. Like, okay, no problem. I would love to fly to Michigan in the winter. So I did. Right. <laughs> from Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, from Orange County, California yeah. at the time. And, and, and yeah. as you know, you can't fly direct to many places out of Orange County oh, either. So, you know, flew in, met Josh out there, toured the building. And, and it was, it was incredible driving down the streets and all the housing. And, and you can tell that whole neighborhood was going kind of through the revitalization and, and this beautiful building. Yeah. You guys did a really cool, like blue metal facade accent stripe around the building. If I'm not mistaken, was it blue? Uh, I, I think it's dark gray. Dark gray. On that one. Yeah. Almost black. Building is blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so never, nevertheless, after touring this building, you know, there's a really cool like park nearby. And, and I'm like, this is an amazing park. Like the city like must have money to like, they're, they're up and coming. This is great. You guys were involved in that park. Yeah. So that was part of the, the Brownfield revitalization program. So we actually built the park as part of the program. And there was actually a small extraordinarily run down park in that kind of in that area but you know we we put in a first class park it, it's really yeah. nice Bravo. Uh, really good for the neighborhood Bravo. <laughs> that's awesome i just wanted to do that i know but it was well deserved by views. it is it's a it really, is. that's that's really cool and and so you know SIBO, the controlled environment building association sam is is they do a annual um built by the best award that we just talked about. So you guys winning that, you know, a few years back was fantastic. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think I might've been chairman at the time. So I was even in your photo. I believe so. I was, I was help holding the flag. You you are. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I had nothing to do for that, by the way, everyone's like, do you vote? Like (laughs) the board members vote like, or like executive board vote? Like, no, no (laughs) chair, like chair. Uh treasure we, we we get no votes on this guys <laughs> unfortunately we don't vote and we don't know who wins either like you know no the show and everything. legitimately who who won you let us in on who won and we got to fly out early I'm like, they don't tell they don't tell me you know what i mean because you give me a couple two three I, I, and i'll tell everyone who won well that's why they don't tell you <laughs> right. that's exactly right mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah no they they keep it they keep it on under lock and key for sure Absolutely, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you are the current vice chair of SEBA now. I am vice chair. I, I, I am currently vice chair, and I think in November, I'll be uh, I'll become chairman at that point. So we're gonna have Mr. to address, chairman. and then Marco will be. Yeah, and then and you, you are currently past chair. And I am past chair, and uh, once you become chair, and Marco becomes past chair i i just you're fired i just move along move along little little duckling 
<laughs> well, yeah. there's still the past chairman's council. Yeah, I created that so I could stay on the board. Which I really like. I'm pretty sure everyone knows <laughs> awesome. why you created it. Well, but again, we have fun with our friends. No, I mean it. It, it yeah adds value to keep to keep the past chairs in a committee to kind of oversee. Not oversee. I don't want to use the word oversee, but you know we're there to oh, offer to council. 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 That's literally why it's called a council. Yeah, guys. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Little... Okay, Jenna. <laughs> so when we had some big decisions to make for SEBA before it was technically the past chairman's council, you know, we leaned a lot on Tim Wynn and Brian, you know, it really, it was very helpful to have the, the knowledge and the wisdom foundation to help us get through everything. There's a, there's a lot of passion in, I think the, the SEBA members and the SEBA board. And I think you guys are keeping that, you know, around, you know, you guys all care a lot about what happens in this industry. So no doubt people around, what are you, um, or I guess like what, tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like so far about, you know, being vice chair. Is there something you're excited about that SEBA is doing right now? What's going on there? There's a lot of exciting things going on. You know, it, genuinely it became more work than I originally anticipated. And <laughs> yep. genuinely, yes. uh, I was, I was, I, you know, I, I thought it would be kind of this cushy job that you, you sit at the head of the table here and there and bang a gavel. Mm -hmm. And it, I see that it's much more complicated and a lot more time, which thankfully, I think the way it's set up works out well. You know, the uh, treasurer, then vice chair, and then chair. Being treasurer and vice chair, you you see what the what the chairman is doing and you're involved in some of the phone calls and interaction with the Matt Ott and those guys. So it, but it's, it's, it's a real thing. You know, Vince knows, you guys know firsthand it's, it's a real commitment. Oh, it, it is. And and it's gotten, you know, it, it used to not be like that. Right. So it used to be kind of more like, you know, sit back, relax and, and slam the gavel. You know what I mean? But we've, right. we've created such like a business plan and vision. And we have so many people behind the wheel driving this thing because it was, it was here, right? You remember that, Sam, it was here. And right. Our, sure. Our yeah. vision was to take it here. Totally. And in order to do that, we had to take little baby steps, but all these little steps were a lot of work within all of our, you know, treasury and vice chair and chairmanship of like every year you got to pick off one major thing to try to do. You can't do it all at once. Right. Baby steps. Yep. It's all baby steps. And you're going to learn that when, when, you know, Marco's doing a lot right now, right. To reformat the conference and, and, you know, the agenda and the schedules and the education. And once that gets kind of set in stone, Sam's going to come in and then Sam's going to have an agenda that he's going to have to mm -hmm. really focus on. And, and, and that's already forming on the back end. Like we know what, we know what Sam, you, we know what you're going to you guys be, have a collective vision. You know what I mean? Right. You're going to be doing yeah. it. And I think I won't tell anyone what that is because that's, you know, that's proprietary. Top secret. Top secret. <laughs> but you are going to be the perfect fit for what needs to happen after Marco's done accomplishing some of the things, obviously with, with the help of the board mm -hmm. um, and everybody. Of course. Thank you guys. Everyone works hard and, and is cares and is passionate. We don't have one. We don't have one board member that just wants to be on the board yeah. for recognition. No. I, I agree. And, you know, everybody's so helpful and mm -hmm. involved. You know, you, you ask people to join a subcommittee and it's like, bam, everybody's in, you know, and I, I, I really appreciate everybody that is involved and stays involved and they're committed. I mean, it, some of these subcommittees is a, a big commitment of time yeah. and, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a big deal. And, you mm -hmm. know, the SEBA is really headed in a great direction. So can we ask you what your favorite trade show is? I well, I would have to say SEBA, genuinely. You know, we're so tight with everybody. You yeah. know, Misty and I love hanging out with, you know, everybody and you know, all the all the SEBA wives, you know, go and do their thing and have a great time and you know, everybody knows each other. You haven't heard of us? I, we need to make t shirts for yeah. this year. Let's do it. Let's make that'd be cool. 
wives t-shirts. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Hey, we can sell them and raise money for foundation of, I'd say Mark of these Canadians. So we don't want to okay. like, you know, that's of Sam's choosing. <laughs> so you, now you have to pick a foundation that we can that. donate right. the proceeds to for yep. the Seba Wives t-shirts. Right. Yeah. Well, right. now you have homework. I love sorry. it. Sorry, so, so do you, Mr. T-shirt designer. Oh, I can I'll whip that thing up in a couple, two, three minutes. <laughs> uh, he's, he's got the swag down pat. We do. Yeah, we like swag. <laughs> Swag's a fun game for us. <laughs> no doubt. I proudly wear my uh, freeze hat on the weekends i love it well, you know what when you buy cool stuff that looks good people wear it you that's got, true it, they do you got the branded bill the branded bills hat correct yeah yeah that's a cool we one. Got a lot of compliments of it. we they're, do they're very expensive hats yes they yeah. are yeah, you can but... buy like the richardson's with your logo on it for like you know eight to twelve bucks a hat these right. are four times that per hat mm -hmm. i but, believe it but fair. they look they look very high quality they look i mean they stand out. You know, Sam, you wanna, when you're a high-end company, you want to have high-end swag, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> bougie. Okay. bougie. Bougie. That's the perfect word for it. <laughs> Love it. That's going to be a show note. Being bougie with Sam Titten. Being bougie. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, tell us maybe like a cool moment. One of our sponsored moments for our podcast and this week's is brought to us this week's this episode <laughs> is brought to us by vapor armor our friends at vapor armor so thank you so much for sponsoring this episode's cool moment do you have a cool moment from your years of experience either an individual moment a story or a moment within you know that was cool for tipman innovation that you would like to share with our listeners one of my favorite all-time favorite moments of TI was the moment I signed my first freezer deal on my own. Wow. It was with, yeah, it was with uh, Durstein Food Service. Yeah, there you go. Zach Durstein, uh, he's still a very, very good friend of mine. You know, he took a legitimate leap of faith and it turned out great. Yeah, I did a 25,000 square foot edition to his facility. Mm -hmm. It's in uh, Souderton, Pennsylvania. You know, it's a just great family, great people, first class. That was a really big, cool moment. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. nothing like that, that first mm -hmm. deal, right, well, babe? Uh, to <laughs> totally. Why do you think he gave you a shot? <laughs> he said that he just had something about me that he trusted and he liked. I had a lot of innovative ideas from he was what he was going to build was more of the 1980s mm -hmm. version of a freezer, mm -hmm. uh, which is not uncommon in Pennsylvania. They still build some people still build them, but I brought a lot of new technology to him from the big freezer industry. It really turned out his building is first class. And when then we updated all of his existing facility the refrigeration much more efficient much more reliable so cool feeling isn't it yeah it was awesome you know that I, I can still i can still picture him signing it and i can still see it mm. i i am with you for all of our listeners out there that don't know our first project at freeze construction was with you sam mr sam tippen and you helped us start a company I mean, mm -hmm. you did. I mean, you you get you inked our first deal, and you know, Put why trust in us? Why why would anyone want to hire a new company that has zero experience? You know, right? And mm -hmm. so I'll ask you, like, did that feeling from inking that first deal and having a guy take a shot on you? Did that like resonate with you to, and be like, oh, no, no doubt. Like, I I love that feeling. Yep. I think. I don't know. And talk about that. Cause that, that means everything to us, mm -hmm. Jed and I, like that was the coolest moment ever for us having someone be like, yeah, dude, you got this. We trust. Yep. Yeah. And I, I did trust you guys. And I had, I had 100 genuinely, I had uh 100% faith in you. I, I mm -hmm. knew you had the knowledge. I knew you had the abilities. I knew you had the relationships. I was confident in everything. Now my partners, not so much, but I basically had to 
tell them if something went wrong, I personally would fix it. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, thankfully, the job went extraordinarily well, and it's a beautiful, beautiful project, and we we couldn't be happier with Freeze. And you know, you have great guys. You know, you do. Your crews are first class. I I couldn't. Our guys even raved about them. You know, at first there's always the everybody's worried about how things are going to go, and by the end they're like, oh, Freeze, they got it. It's yeah. that's easy. Yeah. You know, that definitely didn't come. Uh, out right away i mean it it took time for even us to trust our field because when when you put up everything you own and er, your Mm -hmm. and your reputation sure like you know you you have this level of like you know nervousness and you're watching over them their shoulders and every move they make and everything they say and and, um, helicopter momming them (laughs) yeah yes you have to i would be lying if i told you it was smooth in the beginning because it wasn't you know we 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 had our rough starts and and i remember those site conditions in kansas were brutal you know snow rain warm cold dodge city is one of uh like the third top three windiest cities in north america Mm -hmm. you can google it (laughs) that's a true story and 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 when you're lifting a 56 foot panel in the air like there's there's limitations there because it once it gets too windy it becomes unsafe and you're like dude you're shut down for the day okay well then what else do you do after that if if you're not far enough along do other things on the building to keep you busy i mean besides the the weather and rough terrain and all these other things like it 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 was a challenging job but you know just got to muscle through i mean absolutely and there's did did you guys that was going to let us fail you yeah like there right nothing like we we would have done whatever it took you know what i mean like and 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 yeah. you would have done the same for your client in pennsylvania mm-hmm. you would have without a doubt you would have ran through a brick without a doubt wall without a helmet you know what i mean like without a doubt yeah yeah without a doubt and we do that with all of our clients today we treat every job that way as do you mm-hmm. as we sure. absolutely the next job with you and we did the next job with you it's the same thing like what are what can we do to help this client and, and, and partner with you. Like we always consider ourselves an extension and partnership of our customer, our yeah. GC customer. Well, yeah. Cause we want right. to help facilitate, uh, we want to help facilitate growth, build a badass product, mm-hmm. be an extension of that, that contractor mm-hmm. and help any way we can along the way, whether it's schedule or odds and ends. So man, there's just so much, we have a lot in common, I think, uh, personally. I agree. I agree. But, uh, you you yeah, do have obviously. you do have a lot better hair though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Oh boy, here we go. No, it's all good. <laughs> well, that's that's badass, and and uh, we appreciate Vapor Armor for for that sponsorship of that moment. It yes, meant a lot. Vapor Armor is a phenomenal company, by the way. Learning more about what absolutely, dude. Mm-hmm. Their their they, details and, and a lot of the stuff is proprietary, but like their frost driven detail and 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 their guarantee they're guaranteeing shit for 15 years, no ice, no condensation. No one is doing that in our no. industry. 15 no. years guarantee, dude. And, and yeah. Eric Finnerty, Finney, I call him Finney. Finney. Dude, the beard. Beard. Oh, yeah. Beard. I've got I've got a little beard envy, you know. Yeah, same. Phenomenal company, phenomenal guy. I'm so yeah. glad they, they partnered. Good people, no wow. doubt. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. I would, I would ask you, uh, I want to be cognizant of your time here. Um, but I'd ask you why should folks buy from Titman? But honestly, I think you've already answered that. Answered that. Mm-hmm. Totally. You want to add anything or are you pretty, pretty damn good? I, I think, we're, <laughs> I think we, I, I think we covered it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, then at least tell our listeners how people can find out more about Titman Innovation. Where, where do they go? How do they find you guys? If they want to learn more about what you're doing, wh- where do they go for that? The best place to start is ticold.com. Okay. Okay. Ticold.com. Are you an influencer? Do you have a lot of followers online? Do we need to follow you? Are you doing any Do Instagram to- modeling? On, 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 I, I've had a couple of things go viral on uh, TikTok, but it's car stuff. So <laughs> it's not work related. I love it. That's okay. awesome. Well, speaking of uh, uh, speaking of that, so we we can find Titman Innovation at ticold.com. Ticold.com. Okay. Do you want to uh, give out your cell phone or email so vendors can bug you or no? Call you <laughs> at all hours of the day. I, I, I'll, I'll give you my email. <laughs> uh, 
S Tipman at ticold.com. There you go. That's how you find Sam. Right? That's how you get shoot to him, Sam. Shoot him an email. Okay. So speaking of cars, we're going to finish off the podcast with our final rapid round questions. This or that questions. I'm going to ask you this or that. You got to tell me. You got to pick one. one. You got to pick one. Okay. And this, okay. And I'm this, ready. This is even better. This is, I mean, it, it, it keeps getting better and better, Sam. This one's sponsored by Rytec High Performance Stores. Mm -hmm. Our friends over at Rytec, Chase Deaton. Mm hmm nice you gotta love chase so That's we have nice good partnerships on the on the podcast and and uh yeah anyways you ready this or that questions i was born ready let's go speaking of fast cars and going viral on tiktok are you ferrari or lamborghini uh lambo there you go ford or chevy For sure uh that's a complicated one you have to pick uh, <laughs> so, ford okay ford or dodge ford you lost, baby. Sorry, Sorry buddy. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, that's fine. That's totally fine. I know, I know you have a Dodge, and I love your Dodge. I'll get over it. I'm just talking generally. Okay, okay, okay. TRX or Raptor? Oh, TRX, no doubt. Ah, see, you feel a, better now? That's a Dodge. Feels better now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love it. Uh, awesome. Are you uh, are you beachside or poolside? Beachside, for sure. Nice. I like that. Cold drink or cold beer? Depends on what time. I love it. No one's answered it that way. <laughs> no one uh, has. Okay. Cold drink and cold beer versus wine. Oh, wine every time. You know better than that. Camus. We didn't even get to talk about our Camus story. That's right. Oh, my That's God. Right. I'm going to sidebar this here because we, I mean, where, where were we? Uh, Dominican Republic? Yes, the DR. The DR. Yeah. That's right. The DR. Oh, the yeah. Dinner that we had with you and Missy. It yeah, was a four yeah. hour dinner, and it was just the four of us. Yeah, six bottles of Cayman. Yeah. Six bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, had, yeah. To, had to go to bed right away. Yeah, so yeah. Misty had to make a beeline for the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, good but times. It was very memorable. That that was okay. Oh let's, no doubt. Let's, let's let's wrap it up here. Are you ground up or box and box? Ground up. Freon or ammonia refrigeration? Ammonia. Okay. Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber? Ooh. Probably Timberlake. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. There you go. go a on. losing yeah. answer for you on that one. <laughs> no, it's all good. Well, Sam, that wraps up our podcast, my our friend. Time. Yeah. And, and our time. Awesome. Dude, uh, before we let you go, dude, do you want to add anything? Uh, you want to say anything? Just the... Thanks for having me on. Great time. Great people. Really enjoyed it. Awesome. It's always a fun time when we get together. <laughs> always fun when we get together. Absolutely. Ne never a dull moment. Never, never a, dull a dull moment. moment. And and, and y'all will see Sam much, much more at SEBA as he becomes uh, Mr. Chairman. Becomes Mr. Chairman soon. And and everyone just, you know, give him give him love and support. It's it's not easy going up there and, and running that show and talking and being on stage and, and, you know, mm -hmm. I got no advice for you there, bud. You're just going to have to go up there and do it. <laughs> just wing it. You'll be yeah. fine. Be all right. Uh, yeah. You're, I've seen you speak in public. Yes. You do a great job. You and, and, um, you know, keep kicking ass, man. We love you. Yes, we do. You know, uh, Give we our love, love your, to Misty. Yeah. Feelings very mutual. And, uh, Absolutely. yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Sam, Sam Titman. Thank so, you. Thanks, Sam. And thank you. Uh, Why don't you tell people where to find our podcast? Oh, yeah. Well, Hold that's, on. that's her. <laughs> I love this new button. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can find Cool Times Podcast on YouTube. You can Google Cool Times Podcast and hit that red button to subscribe. You can also find us on all four social medias, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Yeah. And I, I love it. Really, you guys can listen. This is great. You guys can listen to our podcast in the car. Mm -hmm. uh on the plane on the plane in the bathtub on, on the boat on the boat on the airplane yeah anywhere so uh just go to apple uh podcast and google cool times podcast subscribe listen in and uh we got a lot we got a good lineup for uh, 2023 and Me sammy too. dude you thank you, you were, for being a part of it you were a part of it my friend so thanks brother i love it all right happy to be part of it till next time guys we will uh we will see you soon cheers 